it shouldn't be the realer's favor we're seeking. We should be seeking um, God's favor. He, we already have his favor, but we should be seek ye first the kingdom of God, you know, and all of these other things are going to be added unto you. We're supposed to be seeking him and he will reward us. W what verse is that? Hebrews 11, 6, I think. And let me go see. It is 11, 6. I've been studying it all day. Oh, you have? Okay. That's one of my favorite verses. You know, if we, when we seek him, he will reward us for that. Then when we, we can't give up because eventually, um, again, his word does not return to him void. He's going to reward us. So um, we just hang in there and we, we, uh, like I was talking about the other day, it, well, I just did a, uh, a thing that I put in the group. Um, Jesus has been leading me various things. We should be how, how he wants me, how he thinks. And when he's leading me to me, when he's telling me things, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure he's telling me that I'm also supposed to be sharing it. Um, but how important it is to worship him, to be seeking him, to be coming to his feet, uh, to be spending time in his presence, being a Mary, being who Mary was. Mary came to his feet. Um, and the oh other my God, I read, I was studying about that one too. Yes, it, you know, when he's talking to one person about it, he's talking to a lot of people about it. It means it's important to him. And then yeah. he, James four and eight says, if you draw nigh to God, he'll draw back, you know, he'll draw to you as well. And that's something else that, you know, helps you to stay in, in intimacy with God. Yes, yes, coming near to, when you come to him, that's how you come into his presence. You come uh, to him with thanksgiving. It, it, you come into his courts with praise. You come to him with singing. It's, it's a posture. You come to him kneeling and bowing before his presence. Um, and I started studying this because he'd been leading me to Ezekiel 44.4. And that is a story in itself, kind of a crazy story. Um, and I said to him last week, Lord, I'm ready for your fall. For your fall. If you read the verse, it says, talks about um falling on ezekiel fell on his face because of the glory in the room and i said i'm ready for your fall on my face glory lord and he said to me maybe you should fall on your face first and i was you know that's how he talks to me sometimes you know <laughs> cold cocks me right between the eyes and i was like wow oh my gosh you're right you know, it is, we need to be spending that time before him on our face, worshiping him and coming into his presence. You know, Mary knew what was important. And Jesus said for the rest of forever, it's gonna, it's gonna make little Miss Mary famous because it will always be talked about what she did. She spent time in his presence. She didn't let the cares of the world like Martha. Martha was letting the cares of the world get in the way. And, and Jesus said to Martha, you know, oh, girl, Mary over here knows what's important. You know, and she, uh, and then she worships him by that, pour, pouring that important, pouring that costly ointment, that spike nard, that alabaster box in itself, I'm sure was also pretty pricey. You know, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. When you were, so you're talking about Luke um, 39 and it said, and she, and, and she talking about uh, Mary had a sister, I mean, Martha had a sister called Mary, mm -hmm. which also sat at Jesus feet and heard his word. And then in verse 42, but one thing is needful, Mary have chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. And that's just sitting up, sit, cause she was able to sit there and hear the word of God. 
and get revelation and understanding. And that's something that can never, no one can ever take that away from you. You know? That's right. And I love that picture. She sat there and she absorbed, she absorbed every word and, you know, and took in every word. And that's what he's asking us to do. He highlighted the importance of it and said, this will be talked about. And we should be, and the reason it will be talked about is because it's what we're supposed to be doing. You know, we miss that. So when we read these stories and we miss why they're there. Because we're over here being Martha, <laughs> you know? So we like to read other than story, you know? But the importance of it. He wants us to come to his feet. He needs us. He said he's seeking, uh, John 4, 23, he's seeking for such people to worship him. He's seeking for us to do it. And then he will, he will honor us with his glory. You know? And uh, we just all need to get to that place. He's asking us to do it. And, and he'll bless us with what his word says he'll bless us with, you know? He literally told me what I needed to do. I needed to get in his presence. I needed to be on my face in front of him. You know? And I've been, I have been to some point doing that, but uh, the face down part, not so much. The kneeling down part, not so much. You know, I haven't been, and I realized something else. I came out of one church that I was driven out of um, by the spirit and went to another church. And last week when I was, when God was talking to me about all of these things, um, including the fact that he said to me, worship is edible, which it took me a minute, but I realized he was talking about communion. So communion too, guys, that's important. God doesn't talk to his people unless it, there's importance to it. And he's highlighting the importance of communion and taking it. And again, I know I've said this before, but it does not have to be ministered to you by a minister. Uh, it's um, when... Ever you do this in remembrance of me. Um, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. Where was I going? Church. Oh, I was leaving church. I got pushed out of one church by the spirit and I came to another church. I know it's still not quite my church, um, but I haven't, he's not led me elsewhere yet. But it took me until last week that I realized that this, I'm in a mega church, um, that there, we don't kneel in prayer. I'm like, I've been at this church for over a year and a half and I'm just now realizing that, you know, it is, a, it, you know, the, every space it's, it's, uh, efficiently used for space. Cause there's so many people and they're, I'm sure that's what they're thinking. There's not room to kneel. There is. You know, but just something that was all of a sudden dawned on me. And I was ashamed that it took me that long, you know, to absolutely miss that, that we're not actually kneeling in church. So anyway, all of the things that are important, if I'm not doing it in church, I best be doing it at home, you know, in my quiet time with the Lord. As apparently he wants us all to be doing. Because if he's talking to me about it, I'm sure I'm not the only one he's talking to about it. And he's wanting me to share the importance of, him, of worshiping him so that we can usher in his presence. Because I, I want it. You know, it's funny, though, that you say this. Because, I mean, I pray throughout. But there is a set time that I have for prayer um, every evening um, at 9 p.m. And I have my alarm set. And so it's just my reminder. And, mm -hmm. um, and when I first started this, I, it was different than like here the past week or so <laughs> that alarm will go off and I'll be in the bed. And then, you know, I'm just laying there praying. And I know that that's, but it is, there's, there's so much more to that. Just 
the pot it just yeah i don't know i think i needed to hear that as well well i know i did because i'll do that too i mean i'll i'll, I'll lay it what i'll do is i'll do that i'll lay in my bed and that's when i'm because i can't sleep you know you're laying in your bed praying right but um, but usually when I pray, I'm in my quiet time, I'm sitting on my couch in my quiet time, or I'm sitting on top of the bed, you know, and I'll have music and I'll be praying. Um, but I'm not kneeling. I'm not bowed in worship. Like, hmm. Yes, I need to be, I need to do, I need to be doing that. And I have been doing that <laughs> ever since. He told me I, I needed to start by falling on my face if I wanted to see his glory, you know, do that first. So, yeah, we, we, he is our God. And we forget, um, I think some of us, me, you know, that we need to show him that, that honor, that respect that he is our king. Yeah. Can I um elaborate back on ele um, Hebrews eleven and six? So, because I yeah. was studying in that today, and um, I was also I love to I love for to listen to teachers of the word. You know, the ones who teach the word mm -hmm. instead of just preaching the word. Because you, I, for me, I get a better understanding and a better revelation of what God is saying through Scripture. So when the um, I was listening to Dr. Leroy Thompson and he, he says, but without faith, um, Hebrews 11 and six, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And he was pulling the, the cover off of the scripture and the, and the revelation that he got just out of this was this kind of faith tell stays in in the supernatural because when you seek in him right you're in the supernatural because how can you how uh, how else can you seek him but by faith and what do faith do faith brings you into the supernatural so if we're diligently seeking him right we're on our face prayer whatever we're seeking him and that means that we're you know we're coming in and that helps elect a lot Hebrews 11 and 6 help us to stay in the supernatural. And then he also said that in that verse, superna is supernatural hope because you're seeking him. So that it makes sense because you are getting hope because you're seeking him. It could be for your life. It could just be because you just want to fall in love with him. You know, it could be just because you want to get to know Jesus and just be like, you know, I just want a love relationship with you. You know, I thank you for everything that you're doing, but I want this intimate relationship. I want to know your love. I want to know your, you know, I just want to know you, your characteristics, your integrity, everything. I just want to fall in love with you, you know, and that. So I understand how that, you know, supernatural hope. And then another one is um, when you're in that, that, you know, supernatural evidence that can't be stopped. So I can see that, you know, when you're, we get so caught up sometimes saying like, you know what, Satan did this and Satan did that. Well, yeah, he plays little tricks. He plays his little game. That's, that's his job. That's what he's supposed to do. He's not. You know, he's not doing anything that that's his character, but he can't stop you because I'm learning like faith is unstoppable. No matter what, no matter what nobody say, no matter how nobody look at you when you were saying, you know, you have to get out of feeling, you know, caring about what people say. You have to because that's the only way that's the only way that you are really going to get that connection with Christ because if you start caring about well you know well look at her who does she think she is or whatever you you know you get a little distracted and you start doubting yourself but when you cut off the world right you cut off everything and you just get with him you know just just I don't know how to explain it but 
it's that faith, you know, it can't, you can't nobody stop it. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I don't know if that will help anybody, but I know for me, it just studying in Hebrews 11 and six today, it just gave me a deeper revelation of who Jesus really is. And it's just a deeper love connection with him. Yeah, and, and you were talking about the supernatural there, Tanisha, and that uh, John 4, 23 kind of goes along with that because he talked he, about the worshiping him part, saying yes. he seeks you to, he, he you worship him in spirit. Yes. And it, yes. He's seeking us to worship him, so, yes. for such to worship him like that. And it is, uh, you know, as you get closer and closer to him, and get into that um, as you come in, actually start entering in his presence, it is a supernatural experience. You know? Safe bubble. What'd you say, Melissa? Safe bubble. <laughs> yes, yes. And some, probably some amazing things can happen in that, in that safe bubble, you know? And then we can start looking like Moses, you know, where, where there's like, dude, cover your face. <laughs> you know, it's too bright. You know, another thing, when, when he was talking to me about that, um, it reminded me of Joshua because uh, um, I don't know what verse it is. Exodus something, Exodus 38, maybe. Um, talking about where, uh, Moses was asking God to see his glory. And um, but also in that same area, it was talking about Moses left the, the temple, but Joshua stayed there in his presence, face down in his presence. Joshua was, was seeking the Lord, staying down, face down in his presence as much as he could be, you know, Everybody else could have been in that temple too, seeking the Lord, being in his presence. Who does it talk about doing that? Joshua. That's it. He, he, there could have been others in there, but it was Joshua. Joshua was the um, obvious choice for God as the next leader, next ruler, you know, because of. Uh, Too late. Oh, bummer. Talking about. I miss the people are leaving, but yeah, because of uh, his seeking of the Lord, he was in his presence, you know, he was going to be the next obvious choice because he was open to what God had to say. He was respected, receptive. He was going to do God's will. He was seeking God's will, seeking anything that God had for him, which was to be leader because he was willing to be you know, face down in his glory, face down in his presence, seeking it. So what God has for all of us, Hebrews eleven six. 6, when we seek him, he rewards us. 